Hey everyone, good day to all of you. I wanted to talk today uh, about how to measure a group in MOA as well as mills and just have, having some other recommendations as well on that. Uh, my main reason for doing this is I've seen a lot of comments both on my channel as well as many other places. It seems like a lot of people don't really understand MOA and uh, really how to measure that. So here's the target. You can see the five rounds that I did fire just a little bit low. Doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to be talking about today is precision. Uh, do understand also that that is different from accuracy measurements, which accuracy is mostly kind of comparing, did you actually hit what you're aiming at? So the bullseye, in which case I'm close to it, but not really. Precision is the actual measurement of the group itself, which is going to be what I'm going to be talking about. So before you can even measure either MOA or mills, you do need to get the extreme spread. doesn't really matter if you get this in centimeters or inches. I'll show it in inches just because uh, I'll do MOA first and it's easier to convert from that. But the way that you do extreme spread, I have the digital calipers right here to make an exact measurement. The correct way to do an extreme spread is to go from the center to the center. Now, I don't really like doing that because it's very, very difficult. Uh, if you want to go to the center of a bullet hole, you're just kind of measuring in space. So what I usually like to do is to go from the outer edge to outer edge. I've done some ammo accuracy tests in the past, and uh, whenever I overlay how the rounds did, I always put up outer edge to outer edge, which technically isn't the actual extreme spread, but way easier to measure. And then you would just subtract the bullet diameter. Now, technically, as I said, because you're measuring or you're going to be want to be measuring from center to center, you could think of it like you'd want to add half and half of the bullet diameter. But of course, if I simplify that equation, it just ends up being you subtract that. So getting this here, of course, if you are using digital calipers, make sure to zero them out first. Sometimes you'll have to somewhat just gauge and look around at the actual extreme spread. In this case, it's pretty easy. You can see this round and this round are certainly the furthest apart. So that is the extreme spread. So as I said, I'm gonna measure from the outer edge and that's truly the just further, furthest most part of where I can see that little hole, little bullet hole to impact to the other side. So in this case, I'm getting exactly a 0 0.9 inch group, which might sound good, but keep in mind that this is at 50 yards. So. I wanted to do that specifically because this changes it a lot when you actually do measure out the MOA. I'm going to get out my calculator right now and I'm going to put up the exact equation for MOA. And what you'll notice is uh, this is agnostic of the actual distance. It's an angular measurement, same sort of thing with mills, although I still feel like mills is a little bit simpler, but regardless, they are both an angular measurement and not just the inches that they are on the target. Plugging in those numbers that I just mentioned, so starting with the 0 0.9 inches, now note, like I said, need to subtract that bullet diameter. This is 556, which is a 0 0.224. It's not actually 223, despite the name. So that is a 0 0.676. That is the actual extreme spread now. Multiplying that by 100, and then just taking that 67.6, divide that by the range that you're shooting at, so in this case, 50 yards, Keep in mind also that this is not in meters, so if you're doing that, make sure to do that conversion as well. And then multiplying that by 1.047. Again, it's not an exact one inch measurement either. I've seen a lot of uh, people make the mistake of exactly converting, for example, a group at 100 and just saying that that is, you know, whatever in MOA. Uh, it's a little bit different. Now, granted, if you are at 100, it's gonna be pretty similar, but just keep in mind it's ever so slightly different. Not a bad group, that's about what I usually get with this rifle. Uh, one other thing I did want to talk about is, as far as how big a group should be, I have seen a, a few targets where some people are claiming like, oh, or are just discussing like, how did this rifle do? And then they have a target that just has hundreds of rounds in it and they're just pointing at a little group that they claim is like, oh, this is where I was shooting precision. Um, but you can't really tell. Uh, so what I would recommend when you are shooting precision or you know, just gauging how your rifle's doing, re-zeroing, whatever, make sure you're doing it on a clean target and uh, usually if you're just zeroing i'll just do five round groups uh, if i'm doing actual an accuracy test and testing either ammo or a rifle a new setup i usually would prefer to do tens those are usually more precise i feel like they're usually a better measurement overall but it doesn't really matter as long as it confirms and wh whatever you're testing as long as it's a good way of determining that then just you do you as far as the group size goes, but just do understand uh, something like a three shot group can be iffy, uh, especially if you have more inconsistent ammo. So five round group is okay as well. Uh, 10, that's usually why I'm a big fan of that. It really captures whatever's going on. Now, before I did end off though, I did want to mention, as I said, I would measure this in mils as well. So 
If you already have a measurement in MOA, it's actually an extremely simple conversion. All you do is just take the MOA that you just met, um, that you just got, and you just multiply that by 0 0.291. Very simple. Uh, otherwise, if you're getting mils directly and you're doing everything in the metric, then you would just take your millimeter group size and just divide that by the meters that you shot at. As I said, it's a bit more simple, straightforward to do, and then that's it. That is all there is to mils. Again, that is dividing by meters, keep in mind, so that is, again, an angular measurement. It's not just a direct inch or millimeter group. So just a short video today just to kind of explain that. I hope this was informative and kind of helps to clear some of that up to just uh, keep in mind that that is how MOA works. And uh, now I have also something that I can link back to whenever I get another comment, which, as I said, I do get quite a few of these. So otherwise, you know, always love to read the comments regardless. Take care. Hope to see you all in the next one.